Hi guys, I'm Martin and I am a scientist. More specifically, I do research in the field of life sciences, also known as biomedical sciences. But what does this field actually contribute to our society? Well, we study the human body and how it interacts with our environment, like for example pathogens or fine dust from car exhaust. And we also take a look how we can solve the problems associated with these. Now I am doing a PhD, which is the highest academic degree out there. And in order to get it, I need to do research for not one, but four years at a university called Uhasselt, located in Belgium. The country famous for its chocolate, which is full of chemical structures that cause the release of endorphins, which reduces stress and make you happy, but also for its beer and its fries. So what is my research actually about? Well, when we take a look at the maximum life expectancy of a human being through the evolution of time, we see the following. In the beginning as a caveman, we could only reach the age of 30 years. But through medical revolutions, we now reach the staggering amount of 80 years. This is of course great, but there are always two sides to a coin. Because if we take a look at our modern Western world, we can see a rise of an epidemic. An epidemic of neurodegenerative diseases. Now, neurodegenerative diseases are diseases that are happening inside our brain, like for example Alzheimer's or Parkinson or MS. And when we take a slice outside of a sick person's brain, we can see that it is structurally different from a normal brain. And that is because in these diseases we lose the function and structure of our neurons, which causes of course tremendous problems. But why is this happening? And why can't we researchers simply take a look inside the brain to see how these diseases happen? Actually, it's not completely our fault or anything like that. Because our brain is like a castle. It is well protecting us from foreign invaders like pathogens. But when we researchers want to take a look inside when something goes wrong, we also cannot get inside. Because there's only one castle gate called the blood-brain barrier or BBB. Now, a normal blood vessel is built up of endothelial cells and has still spaces in between these cells for substances to pass through and get outside. However, in case of the blood-brain barrier, these endothelial cells that make up your blood vessels are tightly connected together to tight junctions and surrounded by astrocytes, making it impossible for substances to go through to the brains. But how can we solve this? Well, let's go nano. Well, nano is everything with a size of 10 to the minus 9 meter, which is 1 million times smaller than the width of a human hair. And I want to make nanoparticles, which are tiny spheres with a size between 1 and 100 nanometer. Am I the first to use them? No, of course not. Already in the 9th century, the Mesopotamians used nanoparticles to make their pottery look nice. But also today we use nanoparticles. For example, in the medical world, we use silver nanoparticles because they have antibacterial properties. And we also use zinc oxide nanoparticles in the cosmetic world, in solar cream, because it protects us from the sun. And there are many, many more applications for nanoparticles. But how can I use them to achieve my goals? Well, nanoparticles have the ideal characteristic. They can go through the blood-brain barrier. They can go in on one side of the endothelial cell, and given the right size and right amount of time, they can come out on the other side. However, in order to pass through the castle gate, they need the right key. So I cover my nanoparticles with the right key to get through the blood-brain barrier. So what do we want to do when we're inside? We want to find the bad guys. And for that, the keys need to have multiple function. They do not only need to serve as a key, they also are looking glasses to find the bad guys. And they also make sure that we stay invisible for the immune cells of our body. Now how can these nanoparticles signal me that I have found the right bad guy? Well for that, I use a very special technique called fluorescence. And that is basically sending in light from one color and getting light back from another color. And I can do that with my nanoparticles because they're made of a very special material called PPV or polyparafenylene vinyline. And this is a polymer, which is a chain of single units attached to one another. More specifically, it's a conjugated polymer, which means that these single units, or the chain in its whole, has a special structure which makes it fluorescent. Oh, and did I mention, it's also non-toxic, which is of course very nice when you do biomedical research. 
And that, ladies and gentlemen, is basically my PhD in a nutshell. Now I have only one year to go until I reach the finish line. And in that one year, I want to give you guys an exclusive insight into the life of a scientist. As true VIPs, I will give you a first raw seat to the awesome world that is science. And I will do this with my vlogs. So follow me on YouTube and Twitter to the hashtag OMG it's science. And see you on the channel for more badass science for badass people.